So as you can see, in the kitchen at the moment, this space next to the chimney breast, a little bit of an alcove, it's really underutilized. And I think it's screaming out to be a storage space. So we've actually got an existing kitchen unit that we've got left over from the kitchen. So I'm gonna try and fit that into place. But it's a little bit narrow for the space. I've got some pipes to deal with. So I'm gonna try and make it look like it's all completely boxed in. I've got some recycled worktop as well from a friend. It's an old oak worktop, so it should look really nice here. I have got a power socket that I need to deal with as well. I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do with it yet. And as I mentioned, the pipes, they're gonna be a little bit awkward, but it should be a nice, simple job. And in the end, I'm also gonna be adding a couple of shelves up top just to give a bit more storage options. So the first real job is to get the unit put in place. I can make sure that it's centered in the gap just measure either side, make sure both measurements match and then I'll know it's actually dead centre. I can then make sure that it's all nice and level. Put a spirit level across the sides, make sure both sides are sitting level and across the gap as well. You want to make sure that the horizontal is level as well. And this can be adjusted with just the adjustable feet on the bottom of the kitchen unit. Now that I'm happy with where the cabinet's positioned and it's all nice and level, I can mark the wall. Now what I need to mark is where I'm gonna be attaching the cabinet to the wall. We need to put a couple of screws through. So on these corner brackets that I'm already attached, I'm just gonna put a mark inside where the elongated hole is. I'm also gonna mark across the top of the cabinet. I'll do the same to the other side, then I can move the cabinet out the way and draw a line right across the wall, making sure that's level as well. I can then follow it round each corner so then when I put a couple of battens on either side, I can make sure that the battens are all nice and level and they'll be the same height as the top of the cabinet. So I've gone ahead and I've marked the wall to add the battens, but before I actually add the wall plugs and properly drill the holes and get this attached, I first want to scribe the shape of this wall. As you can see, it's not perfectly flat. I don't think any wall in the house is, but this one is quite bad. The plaster, it's really dipped in the middle here. So it's going to be well worthwhile scribing this line. So when I drop the worktop in, it should be a nice snug fit. I'm going to make a template from a scrap piece of cardboard. I'm going to offer it up. I've cut a little bit of an angle at the back and that's just to make sure I'm not referencing off the back wall. If that was straight, it might kick this out a bit. So I'm literally just offering it up to this side of the wall. Here's my line that I've marked level, but that's going to be the bottom of the worktop. So I want to move this up just a little bit. So the reference line I'm going to be marking is going to be much closer to the top of the worktop that you'll actually see. Now with it butted right up to the corner and held tight against the wall, I'm going to take the pencil and hold it as flat as I can against the wall itself and literally mark a line. And what this is doing, it's allowing the pencil to naturally follow the shape of the wall and allow it to transfer that mark over onto the piece of cardboard. Get it as accurate as you can, and now we can cut this out with a pair of scissors. And now, this should fit nice and snug against the wall. To attach the bracket that's on the back of the cabinet to the wall, I'm going to first have to drill a hole in the wall. I'm then going to have to add a wall plug, that's so the screw can actually bite into it. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've added a bit of painter's tape to the end of the drill bit. This is a masonry drill bit, so this is designed for drilling into brickwork. And I've placed the tape so it gives me a little bit of a depth guide so I don't have to drill too deep. I'll just get the perfect depth for this wall plug. So I've gone ahead and I've removed the bracket from the back of the kitchen unit. Now I can get this attached in place and I'm going to be using a 30mm screw for this. It hasn't got to be perfect at this point. Because it's a slot, I'll be able to move it up and down. And when I put the cabinet in place, I'll have a little bit of movement back and forward as well. So for now, I'm just tightening it up enough so it doesn't spin round on me. Now I can do the same thing to the other side. For the walls that I'm going to have the wooden battens, I'm going to be using slightly bigger screws because it's also got to get through the wood and into the wall. So I'm also going to be using some slightly bigger wall plugs, which means I need to drill a slightly bigger hole as well. So I've got both of the battens attached to the walls now, and I've got the cabinet sat back in place, but I haven't secured the brackets at the back, them just in there loose at the moment. Now I can bring in the template that I made. Now I did go ahead and staple the pieces together 
so it should be a nice snug fit so as you saw these were scribed just by tracing a line using the pencil and cutting out to the line i did the same for the back and for the side that's got the pipes in including a bit of a cutout for where the pipes will sit this piece at the front is just rough i've just stapled it in place just to make sure that the spread's correct other than that i'll now be able to take this lay it on top of the old worktop trace round it and get it cut out and fingers crossed it'll fit so here's the piece of scrap old worktop as it's just starting to tip down so i'm going to very quickly trace around this and then get it back inside and wait for the rain to stop <laughs> there's my outline and to cut the worktop to shape now i'm just going to be using a jigsaw i'm going to take it nice and slow and try my best to hug against the line as tight as possible Now hopefully that should be a nice tight fit, but if not, I can always adjust it again with a jigsaw or come in with some sandpaper to try and tweak any little bumps that need removing. Now I can do the same to the back and the other side edge. I've had to do a hell of a lot more tweaking to this than I thought I ever would. The gaps now, they are pretty big, I've got to be honest. But the way that the walls were, there was narrower at the front and wider at the back. So I couldn't just slide it in. I had to put it in at an angle and drop it into place. And of course, the walls also tapered in at the top. So in order to get it through the top, I had to make it a bit smaller so it would then drop in place. And as soon as it drops in place, I've now probably got about three millimetre gap in some of the edges. My option is to fill it with some cork. I'm just going to use some white cork and then I'll be able to smooth it off and that should hide a multitude of sins. But before I even get to that part, I've first got to clean it up. This is the underside. You can see where some burnt pans have been put down before. Putting a hot pan on, it will burn out, so I do keep that in mind. There's also some paint. Obviously, I don't have to worry too much about what the underside looks like because you'll never see it, but it's worth cleaning it up. I'm going to start with an electric planer. If you haven't got one, don't worry about it. You can just do this sanding as well, but of course, sanding will take a lot longer. You can really see the difference there already. We just one pass. That should be good enough for sanding now. Like I said, I don't need to bother too much with the underside because it really won't be seen. But let's flip it over and give a decent plane across the top. That should be ready to sand now. So now that I've got the worktop sanded, I'm going to install one of these pull-up sockets. So I'll flip this over. This is going to be kind of my solution to deal with the plug sockets that I'm going to end up blocking in. This is going to go through a large hole, cutting the worktop, and then it's just the case of pulling this up whenever you do need to use a socket. It's also got USBs in the top, so great for charging your phone. Like I say, I'll flip this board over. So I'm going to start with a hole saw, cutting from the reverse side. I'll wait until the centre drill bit pops through. I can then flip it back over to the face side, which will be the top that we see, and then I can finish the hole from that side. It'll give a much cleaner cut that way, and hopefully this will fit. That'll do. This black section actually goes on the underside. It'll tighten up and clamp the worktop between these two pieces, but all I needed to make sure was this silver part fit through, and the black part and the top silver didn't also fall through. And now that that's all sorted, I can finally add some protection to the oak. I'm going to be using a top oil that's specifically designed for kitchen worktops. This should soak in, feed the grain and also offer a protective surface to the top as well. I'm going to do the underside first. Again, it doesn't really matter about this, just need to get some protection on it. Then I'll flip it over and give a nice coat on the top and sides. So while I've got the old drain, I'm going to go ahead and get the filler pieces added. These are the pieces that go either side of the cabinet in between the wall. And I'm just going to attach them with a couple of corner brackets. These will be plenty strong enough because it doesn't actually bear any load. I'm going to first attach the corner brackets to the unit, then offer up the filler piece and attach it with a couple of screws. Now the side filler piece I'll just rest up against that and get attached with a couple of screws again through each of the brackets. So now I've got these side panels attached with the corner brackets. 
I can put it in place and fingers crossed it'll actually fit. It's always a little bit awkward, but it should, he says, fit. This gap's a bit bigger than I wanted, but... Well, it's in. The gaps are a little bit bigger than I wanted, but I am going to be running a bead of cork down there anyway, so cork will always hide a multitude of sins. Now what I've got to do is get the unit back out and I'm going to fill some of the holes that are in the base of the wall. But once it's all filled, I'll then be able to get the walls painted and get everything else put back in. To save me a job, I ended up getting my glamorous assistant in to do the painting. With the shelves and unit in place, the last piece that I need to cut is the kickboard for underneath the unit. I need to cut the skirting board profile on the end so it'll be a nice snug fit. Then I can slide the kickboard into place using the provided clips onto the legs of the unit. So I'm going to be using a kitchen and bathroom silicon and to help spread it I'm just going to have some water. I'll also just have a bit of kitchen roll so I can wipe off any excess. But with the masking tape in place, it means I haven't got to worry so much about overspreading and getting it all on the freshly painted walls and on the oak. I can just squeeze it into place, wet my finger, wipe it nice and smooth and then remove the masking tape. This definitely took a lot longer than I thought it would, but I think the end result, it's not too bad. I'm really disappointed, to be honest, with the size of the gaps around the worktop in particular. There wasn't really much I could do. The way that the walls and tapered, being narrower at the front, wider at the back, and also narrower towards the top, just made it really awkward to fit it into place. So I think in hindsight, I would have deliberately cut the worktop a lot smaller than I did and rather than relying on silicon to go around the edge, I could have used some nice oak moulding instead. It would have covered a much bigger gap and I wouldn't have had the hassle of back and forth trying to cut little bits off to get it fit into place. I did save you the torture of watching all those back and forths, but trust me, it took longer than it should have. But in the end, I did get it into place, I got it secured and the silicon will hide a multitude of sins. And at the end of the day, this was underutilised space. So I think now that we've actually got a cupboard here, we can put lots of stuff inside to get stored out of the way, out of sight, out of mind sort of thing. But then we've also got a little bit more of worktop space, ideal for a mixer, space for books, even a little telly up the top, and of course some scales and other bits and bobs. I'm sure this will end up getting filled with a hell of a lot more stuff. And you probably notice I've still got to box around the pipes. I will get it done. I'll just kind of run out of time on this one. The one I have to keep reminding me every six months, it will get done, I promise you. I hope that you like this one and I hope that I've inspired you to give it a go for yourself. You might not want to give it a go if you've got old walls like these ones and them a bit tapered, but trust me, persevere with it. I hope that the results speak for the cell from an empty alcove to at least a usable space now. So please do consider having a go at doing this yourself. It's probably a lot easier than I've made it look, but I think the end result's pretty decent. If you haven't subscribed to On A Budget already, make sure you click the subscribe button and then click the little bell icon next to it. That way you'll get a notification as soon as you upload a new video. Thank you all for watching.